in the process of uh, sketching the house uh, for a uh, developer. It's a speculative house. We're trying to satisfy a market. The basement's already in, and we'll be going through a lot of different iterations of how we're going to build a house on top of that basement. Uh, the, this is the latest. Uh, what uh, the latest response from the contractor is maybe these walls are too high. So what I wanted to show is how I change those walls. And I don't practice these things. So if I make a mistake, you get to uh, benefit from, oh, that's not the way to do it. Anyway, uh, we'll start here since uh, the roof is not going to be correct anymore. I'm just going to uh, select it and then go down to the eyeglasses down here and say uh, hide out. And you can see that I've already put the fascia board in, so I'm going to hide that element too. And we'll see what happens when I try to change the wall height. So that, so just spin it around to so see that this portion of the house is well. I can come down here and say do not crop the view, or I could have changed the crop view. So here we have it. You can see that there's a two-story space here. And the latest response from the uh, contractor, the developer, was well, maybe these walls are a little too high. So I said, let's drop them down six feet. So I will take a look at this wall. The base constraint is the first floor, and the top constraint is the uh, second floor. And I went up eight feet out and five eighths, so that's really, uh, well, we're going to take six feet off, and so that would make it two feet. Let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, I don't generally pay attention to those error messages. Sometimes they fix themselves, and sometimes I can go back and fix them later. So I think that I can do the same thing with all of these. Let's see what happens if I do that. And this one too. Uh, yeah, let's try that. Let's just make it uh, two feet. So I've subtracted eight feet from the offset. But for some reason, I said uh, take it to the second floor and then go up eight feet. That did not work. I have an error. So now, right, and this goes up to the top of the second floor. So I'll make it minus six feet. That should pull it down. Yeah, it did. All right, what about this guy? Now, this one goes to the second floor. So I'm going to make that two feet. Yep. And this guy is again. The top constraint is the second floor plus eight feet over five eighths. I'll change that to two feet. That will drop it down six feet. This is a stacked wall. Um, I might have an issue with that. Uh, maybe I should here. And well, okay. It looks like I might be all right here because this is the variable. So, uh, you can see that I've made that the variable. So that means that when I change the height of that wall, the change will occur on the wall that's designated as a variable. So I can do that. And we'll take that down to six feet. Take it up to two feet. Okay, so it looks good. Now, let's change this to consistent color just to look at it so you can see that these walls went down pretty easily. I'll have to change the height of the stack. But for this wall, I'm going to need to change that by six feet also. And it goes up to the top of the second floor. But what's the variable here? Usually, I make the basement wall the variable. So. If I take six feet out of that, it's going to change the height of the basement wall to take that six feet out. 
but I really want the six feet to come out of here. So I'm gonna change that first of all to 11. That would be minus six feet. And let's see what happens when we take a look at that. I need to change the, uh, so what happened here is the uh, variable here was the basement wall. So I haven't changed the top of the wall constraint yet. So what happened was uh, the basement wall stretched up to make up for that difference. So now I want to say, top of second floor minus six feet. We'll see what happens if we say minus six feet here. That should uh, work, Let's see if it does. So the variable that stretched there was the, uh, when I took that six feet out, took six feet out of this wall, but it was still constrained up to the top. So the basement wall simply stretched up. And then when I changed the height of the wall by the constraint, the top constraint, the basement wall stretched back to where it should be. So that might go uh, work for uh, since this wall and this wall were the same, that happened again. And I think this wall is the same. And this wall is the same. And I think I'm going to stop there in terms of selecting. But I think they're all the same wall. So I can simply say minus six feet. Let's see what happens. All right, so I think maybe some of the windows are not going to work anymore. The windows did work, but the wall went down where it is. So I'll need to change the height of the windows. Let's see. So this guy and this guy are the same wall. This guy, let's so grab him. It's the same. This is the one I was trying to grab, and I got it. They seem to be all the same wall. So let's see what happens if I go minus six feet. As I've said before, we get some error messages, but I don't generally worry about those error messages. Uh, sometimes as I modify the house, things change and they correct themselves. And if they don't, then I'll see them later. So I'm distracted by that. So it looks like to me, yeah, it's good. This room will have to change. So all I need to do now is modify the, uh, the windows. The question how I'm going to handle that for demonstrating this changing the stacked wall and using the uh, top constraint or changing the height of the uh, one of the components inside of the wall. I think that's a pretty good place to stop here.